Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India number 32 so we have been working with uh, three body problem so we'll continue with that so if you remember in the last lecture uh, we discussed about the barycentric uh, reference frame and motion with respect to that so in that context we worked out with this figure okay so here r i j as shown here uh, in this equation equal to r j minus r i as it is written here equal to r b j minus r b i. So, this already we have written in the last lecture. Moreover, r b i this quantity it is here uh, what I am showing by uh, this uh, symbol here. Let us say this one r b i this quantity it is a double dot means it is a uh, in second derivative with respect to the time uh, with respect to time. So, this is given as uh, r i minus r b double dot and since r b double dot this equal to 0 because with respect to the barycentric reference frame the uh, bari barycentric reference frame center of uh, where it is uh, located this point okay, which is the origin of the barycentric reference frame this is non accelerating. So, the vector from this place if I draw a vector from this place to this place till this point. So, this is your r b the r b this vector becomes from here to here this is your r b from this origin to this point. And as we know that uh, for a cluster of particles the center of mass either moves with constant velocity or either it is at rest and therefore, r b double dot this quantity turns out to be 0 and therefore, this equation gets reduced to r i double dot. That means, the motion of any particle if you are trying to write the um, equation of uh, motion for any particle with respect to any inertial reference frame. The physics does not change it remains the same. Okay. So, r b i equal to r i double dot this is the simple uh, conclusion and already we have discussed about this particular equation in the um, last lecture. Okay. So, we can state the equation of the ITS particle what we are trying to write here m i times r i double dot on the right hand side only the forces will come here in the vector format and because r i double dot equal to r b i. So, the, this you are writing with this frame and uh, r b i this you will write with respect to this frame the barycentric reference frame. So, because both are equal. So, you can just replace it that means, uh, this is also m i times r b i double dot. So, it is uh, the same okay, because here uh, this quantity turns out to be equal to this quantity. Therefore, we can either write in terms of this or either we can write in terms of this. So, equation of motion of the ITS particle is independent of any particular reference frame. This depends on the 
relative positions only vectors of different particles slash bodies because the force will depend on that. So, that means it is a only it depends on r i j position of one with respect to the other. Okay, so, if, uh, now if, uh, we will enter into some uh, some of the properties for the three body problem or maybe the n body problem. to solve the equations of motion for in body in body system we can have these approaches we can have the following approaches one is numerical integration of course we are aware of all these things but this is not as simple uh, as stated here uh, because the numerical error error accumulation may lead to divergence. So, we have to be very careful in applying this and this part of course, it is not part of our uh, curriculum here. So, I will not go into this. You can look into the Valado astrodynamics. by D Valado, David Valado approximate analytical solution this also we are not doing the third one is exact analysis of restricted problem or the simplified problem exact analysis of simply fight problem study of general properties of motion without solving the equations. So, simplified problems in this category uh, we will take this as the restricted three body problem and in this part. So, this we are going to deal with and the third and the fourth. So, study of general properties of motion without solving the equation, without solving the equations of motion. So, in this what we are going to do already we have looked into, we, we will prove that total angular momenta h is a constant, total energy this is a constant and uh, center of mass 
moves with constant velocity. So, already we have done this for the two particle system and here we will do for n particle system. So, I will do it very fast uh, because there is no point in uh, elaborating the same thing and again and again. So, because this is part of the curriculum, so I will wind it up fast. So, uh, center of mass moves with constant velocity. So, the, these are the three things in this we can prove. So, first we will do the fourth part and thereafter we will come to the third part. n particle or n body system. And for this we need to start with the scratch and write the equations of motion. So, we are starting here, this is the reference frame x y z and then we have multiple particles here. And let us say that uh, this is the ITH particle whose mass is Mi, and this is the JTH particle Mj whose mass is Mj here. this is r i j, this vector is r j and this vector is r i. So, if we write the equation for for the i t s particle, so this can be written as m i times r i double dot. So, force is acting on the i t s particle, this will be given by m i m j multiplied by g divided by r i j whole cube r i j and this sign here will be positive because this vector is directed from this place to this place r i j. So, in r i j is a vector in the direction of the force therefore, here plus sign will appear. So, this plus sign I will remove. Now, sum it over all the particles. So, if we sum it over all the particles that will be j equal to 1 to n, but because the i t s particle cannot apply the force on itself and therefore, we need to take care of that also. So, j not equal to i. m i times r i double dot. So, therefore, the quantity which is present here we can write it in this way j equal to 1 to n f i j where this term is nothing but the force acting on the i t s particle due to the j t s particle and then we have to integrate it over all the particle j is not equal to i. This can also be written as 1 by 2 summation j equal to 1 to n j not equal to i and f i j plus f j i. What does this mean? That say we have two particles here. Uh, 
Okay, uh, we have to do one more step here before uh, uh, let me explain it completely. First, I will remove this. Right now, this is not required. This part I will remove. and therefore this also we will remove here now this is the force on the right hand side we have this is the force acting on the its particle total force total force acting on the ith particle now our objective is to prove uh, the three properties i have mentioned there that the center of mass moves with constant velocity, total angular momenta it is a constant and another one was total energy of the system it is a constant. So, the first one the center of mass we also write this as center center of mass of the system moves with constant velocity. Here system means the system of particles. This is the first issue here. So, what we do that we sum over all the particles. If we do this so, on the right hand side we will have equal to 1 to n f i j now at this stage we write it this way 1 by 2 f i j plus f j i i equal to 1 to j equal to 1 to n i equal to 1 to n. Okay. Why we are doing this that will be obvious from the following thing. Suppose, we write here m i r i double dot and sum it from i equal to 1 to 2. So, on the right hand side we will have i equal to 1 to 2 and j equal to 1 to 2 f i j. So, okay. Now, if I write according to this part, so this will be 1 by 2 times summation. Uh, this uh, these things I am not writing here just for shortcut. So, if, uh, if we expand it, let us expand it directly here in this place. So, uh, this will become if we write j equal to 1 to 2. So, f 1 to and if first we can write i equal to 1. So, if we write i equal to 1 see the, the way of expanding it is if I choose i equal to 1. So, and then thereafter expand j from 1 to 2. So, this will be 1 1 j equal to 1 but already we have written that i equal to not equal to j. So, this quantity will not be present. Okay. Thereafter, we will have f equal to 1 and j equal to 2. So, this quantity will be present because i not equal to j. The other part will be similarly i equal to then we will choose 2. So, f 2 and j equal to 1. So, this is ok and f 2 2 then it will come this is not possible. So, this term drops out. Okay. So, once we expand it, then here in that case you do not require this part. So, uh, once we are writing here in this bit uh, this way and then we are expanding. So, 1 by 2 is not required here you will require once you write it in this fashion. So, uh, therefore, f 1 2 this is nothing but equal to f 2 1 is nothing but equal to f 1 2 okay. 
and therefore, this quantity is 0, 0 vector. It is a very simple. So, uh, this way if you look into this part and uh, to make it convenient I have written it in this way, because there will be correspond if you have one particle here, here. So, the force acting on this particle is in this direction. So, you will have also force acting on this particle in the opposite direction. Similarly, one particle is here. So, you will have force acting on this particle in this direction and there are also will be force acting on this particle in this direction. Similarly, force acting here in this direction, force acting that they will exist in pairs. And therefore, if I write using this notation and obviously, here i is not equal to j, this always we have to write. So, uh, we can expand it here in this way and 1 by 2 factor then we have to write it here. You can check it, okay, it is easy because extra term we have introduced here and for that reason we are putting here 1 by 2, but here it is not required in this places it is not required because we are just directly expanding uh, this term, we are directly expanding it i not equal to z. Okay. So, therefore, what we see that m i r i double dot m i r i double dot this quantity summed over i equal to 1 to n this quantity is 0 and 0 is a vector here. Okay. Though always I will not put here uh, the, this does not look good and uh, therefore, we will uh, simply write here 0. Now, if we take the differential sign outside, it can be written like this, okay, because M, uh, the mass is constant and therefore, this is applicable. The differential operator and the summation operator, they can be exchanged. So, this implies i equal to 1 to n this equal to a constant a. At the next level then again we can take out the differential integrator outside write it this way m i and this implies a t plus b and we know that m i r i this is nothing but m times r center of mass which we have written as the barry center. So, this quantity is a t plus b where m equal to summation m i i equal to 1 to n. So, this is the definition of the center of mass and from here what we can observe that this can be written as a by m t plus b by m and from this equation From this equation, we can observe that this quantity is nothing but V center of mass. You just rewrite it, this quantity can be written here as if, uh, m times r center of mass d by dt 
because the quantity here we have written this quantity is m r c m. So, we can write it here in this way. So, this equation gets reduced into this format and this implies m times d r c m by d t equal to a and this implies here r c m dot which is nothing but v center of mass equal to a by m. So, the position of the center of mass it depends on the velocity of the center of mass. If initially initial conditions are such that if initial conditions are such that b equal to 0 and v c m equal to 0 then r c m also becomes 0 means it remains at rest, okay. but if v c m is not equal to 0. So, in that case this will keep vary. So, only under this condition if the initial conditions are such that b equal to 0 and v c m equal to 0 then only you get r c m equal to 0. Otherwise center of mass of the end particle system it will move with a constant velocity. So, what we have got here this constants a and b. So, because it is a three dimensional vector we are dealing with r i which is three dimensional. So, you can observe this is r i this is three dimensional x i it has three components r i can be written as x times e 1 cap plus y times e 2 cap plus z times e 3 cap and we can put here i to indicate that this is corresponding to the ITS vector. So, this is a three dimensional vector. So, so, to be consistent on the right hand side all the vectors must also be three dimensional. So, th this has three components and this has also got three components and because these are constants of integrations all these are constants of integration and therefore, we have a total of 6 constants of integration. So, this way we are able to identify the in the first part the 6 constants of integration, 6 constants of integration. Next we have and how many constants are involved because our system equation m i times r i double dot this is our equation of motion on the left hand side and on the right hand side if we have f i j i j equal to 1 to n and j not equal to i this is the thing given to us. So, this is the equation of motion and here because we have n number of particles. So, we will have n equations n equations of motion and all these are vector equations vector equations 3 d vector equations because we have 3 this is described in 3 dimensional space x y z. So, this gives us how many constants of uh, integrations are or unknowns are involved here unknowns involved involved are total of already we have discussed for the two particle system what we have observed that we have total 12 constants 
why because for one particle we have six constant and for the second particle also we have six constant so a total of 12 so here in the three particle case for each of them we will have six constants involved so unknown involves are six and because there are n particles unknown involves are six n so out of this six n right now we have been able to identify just six constants of integration we are looking into the general properties of the motion so one of the general property is that the center of mass moves with constant velocity and what else the other will be the total angular moment of the system or the particle uh, system of the particles or the n body system it is a constant and the last if, uh, last one is the total energy which uh, which is nothing but the potential plus kinetic energy and that is constant so we quickly do that part also so out of this only we are knowing uh, right now the six constant if we have three particle system so we will have six into three total eighteen constants for three particle system or the three body system and out of that we will be able to identify only 8 minus 10 and it uh, will be able to identify only 10 and 8 remains unknown. Again I am stating that if the initial conditions are known, so you can always numerically propagate the system of equations, but the closed form solution you are not getting. Uh, once you get the closed form solution from the differential equation, so uh, for the three particle system 18 constants will manifest there, but we are not able to identify those constants. Only 10 constants we are able to identify for the three particle systems system and for n particle system we will have 6 n and out of that we will be able to identify only 10. So, this is remaining unknown. unknown for n particle system. We will not be able to identify all these constants. So, uh, here in this part again uh, I am stating that uh, if you know the initial condition so, as I told you that if you know the initial condition you can integrate the system equation and you could propagate the state, but also you can check from this place that if the initial conditions are known you will be able to identify these constants A and B given the initial conditions. Posi initial conditions are initial velocity and initial position vector. And it is a quite simple to uh, see that it is a class uh, your uh, 12th to B tech you might have all learned all these things. So, I am not going into all those details how to uh, solve that equation and find out the solutions. Okay, so, we were here in this point now our next step is to prove that the angular momenta of the system remains constant. So, the second general property of motion is angular momenta of the particles is a constant. of n particles fixed vector or either a constant vector. Constant means here it is a because it is a angular so angular momenta is nothing but summation of angular momentum. So, if, uh, once you sum it up so if along the x y z axis you get three components. So, this is also a three 
uh, a vector of three dimension or three dimensional vector. So, this is 3D vector. So, taking the equation of motion, we have written this as m i times m i times m j multiplied by g r i j whole cube or j not equal to y. If we take cross product on both sides with respect to R i, because the summation is over only uh, j and therefore, we can write it this way. This summation does not extend over i here and therefore, we can introduce uh, i inside the summation sign otherwise it is not possible. If i is on if suppose I if I put here i equal to 1 to n, so then I can not pull this r i inside. Okay, so, with this uh, if you remember in the past for the two particle system, we have used one technique that d by d t r i cross r i dot if we differentiate you use this technique of uh, taking the cross product on both sides taking cross product on both sides with respect to r i. So, you can see that the left hand side can be generated from this differential if you differentiate. So, this becomes r i cross r i dot plus r i cross r i dot cross r i dot and r i cross r i double dot, but uh, the quantity which appears here this quantity is 0 this is 0 okay, because it is a uh, cross product of r i dot r i dot. So, therefore, this recovers here in this place. So, we use this technique and uh, this is a very useful technique you will find uh, helpful uh, this technique helpful in solving many of the um, space uh, uh, flight mechanics related problems especially to the uh, planetary motions. Okay, so, for on the left hand side we can write here m i times d by d t r i cross r i dot and on the right hand side we have j equal to 1 to n j not equal to i and whole cube and r i cross and what r r j i j is the quantity here which is appearing r i j this quantity is nothing but r j minus r i. So, therefore, the right hand side gets reduced to j equal to 1 to n j not equal to y and 
and you can see that this cross product this will vanish and therefore, we are left only with R i cross R j and on the left hand side we will have m i and as you can see that we can take this d y d t outside. So, m i times r i cross r i dot this is nothing but m i times r i cross rather write it like this So, this is the angular momentum of the i t s particle. Okay. So, this by this is d by d t h i we can write it this way angular momentum of the i t s particle. Now, here look here in this place this is i and j here also i r i j. So, we can assume this to be a some sort of function let us say that we I represent it using f i j j equal to 1 to n j not equal to i. And if we do the summation over all the particles, j equal to 1 to n j not equal to i this is f i j. So, from here what we observe that this gets reduced to d by d t summation i equal to 1 the exchange of the differential operator and the summation operator h i and on the right hand side we can use the same technique as we have used earlier and write it in this way j equal to 1 to n i equal to 1 to n j not equal to i and f i j capital F i j here in this case we are representing times f j i and this quantity is obviously 0. So, the right hand side is set to 0 and therefore, this gets reduced to d h by d t this equal to 0. Obviously, this is a vector here which I am not putting and this implies h is a constant vector which will let us write this as a c. So, and what h is? h is summation over all the particles i equal to 1 to n h i. So, h i is here h i is your angular momentum momentum of the i t h particle and h i is we have written as m i times r i cross r i dot r i dot is nothing but v. So, r times r cross v multiplied by m this is basically the equation of our angular momentum of a particle m. So, following this notation we have uh, h i defined here and this is the total angular momenta. Therefore, this h is total or simply you can say this angular momenta angular momenta momenta of the particles. So, this is the second property we have proved here and h has three components h is a vector which consists of h 1 e 1 cap h 2 e 2 cap and h 3 e 3 cap. So, the here these three constants are identified. If you know the initial 
position and velocity of all the particles. So, you will be able to get h 1, h 2 and h 3. So, how many constant we have identified? We have identified earlier the 6 and now we are identifying 3. So, total of 9 constants identified till now, 9 constants of motion identified till now. Rest uh, one more we will be able to identify and thereafter we will discuss about this the solvability of this problem uh, of the uh, n body problem or the three body problem. Yeah. So, we will continue in the next lecture we stop here thank you very much.